Good afternoon, everyone. It's, it's great to see you. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to start uh, with really a, a heart of gratitude. Uh, I've been here as of next week, nine months, and uh, things have gone very quickly. We've accomplished a lot. Uh, I'm grateful for everyone uh, in this room, the sacrifice you make to be away from your family, whether it's the day like today or during our games or away games. I'm, I'm grateful uh, to the McCaskey family, uh, especially George and uh, Pat and Brian and, uh, and also the Hallis family. And then all of the staff members here, our players, our coaches, um, Matt, Ryan, um, and really our fans and partners. So it really uh, has been very special to be here and uh, to work with everyone here. And I'm excited about uh, what the future holds. You've heard Matt and Ryan address a lot of the, the open issues that you uh, wanted to find out about. And uh, as we said, we'll take some, some questions. But I just want to make sure that I reiterate you know, what I said even in my opening press conference back in, in January is that you know, my whole approach uh, to building this franchise, not only from a business operation standpoint, a culture standpoint, a stadium development standpoint, a football operations standpoint, is to make sure that we are extremely deliberate that we're fair, uh, that we're good listeners, that we take the long-term approach. All you have to do is look at any business. You talk to any CEO, president, any leader of any organization, uh, they will tell you that it's very important to make sure you're deliberate in your decision-making process. And that's one of the things I've enjoyed most uh, since being here, is to be thoughtful, fair, uh, and deliberate. Uh, as you build any organization, but especially a football organization, the National Football League, you have to ask yourself, kind of where do you stand? Where are you? What needs to be done to go forward? And do you have the right people to accomplish that goal? I know for me, uh, I'm, I'm a very uh, quiet, uh, impatient person. Uh, I don't vo uh, uh, voice my impatience, but I'm extremely impatient. I'm competitive. I want to win, but I also want to do it with integrity and style and grace and class and humility. Uh, and that's something that's top of mind here. That's what the Chicago Bears stands for. That's what our fans deserve. That's what our alumni, our players, our partners, our sponsors, every employee, every coach, uh, our ownership, that's what the National Football League deserves. And that's what we're going to continually do here is to build this uh, program, this operations that we're proud of that it's not a one-year wonder, that we don't have a good year and then we disappear for 10 years, that we can build this from a long-term standpoint. And that takes time. I've been there. I've been there in St. Louis. I've been there in Minnesota. Um, and you're constantly in a perpetual state of evaluation, getting better, adding pieces, adding parts. And talent does matter, whether it's a coach, whether it's a player, whether it's a front office member, whether it's a fan. Uh, we love the passion here. We love Chicago. My family loves Chicago. And I am so grateful to be in this position and we'll continually work extremely, extremely smart and hard and, and to take the approach uh, that we're going to build this the right way, that it will be built to last uh, for many years. And, and that's not pleasant and because we all wanted more. I didn't want to win seven games this year. I don't want to be at this press conference today when there's teams practicing around the NFL and playing in playoff games. That bothers me to my soul. Uh, I haven't been able to sleep the last couple nights. And so I look forward and to make sure that we have constant reminders that we are building an organization here that will be highly successful on the field. Our goal is to win the division every year, to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl, to represent the NFC uh, not only in the Super Bowl, but to win a Super Bowl. That's where we are. And that's where I'm focused on making sure we develop that from a football standpoint, to be a resource to Matt and to Ryan and every staff member here. I also want us to be the best business or organization, not only in the National Football League, but in all of sports. I want people to talk about what we're doing here in Chicago, to come here to learn. That takes time, that takes people, and that makes sure that we build it the right way. And then from a stadium standpoint, I am focused on making sure that we build the most progressive, uh, smartly priced uh, 
on time, under budget stadium development project that has ever been built in the National Football League. And so that's what we're focused on every single day. Uh, we will continually make changes, make upgrades, uh, make adjustments to get to that point, but do it in a manner that's deliberate, that's decisive, and that's fair, and to always be focused on forward thinking, innovation, and forward movement. So with that, again, I really do appreciate your time, your attention to detail. I appreciate your fairness. And uh, it has been an absolute pleasure of being here today. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure of walking in and out of this building on a daily basis. And I'm looking forward uh, that today continues part of the evolution process of building the Chicago Bears uh, that we're all so grateful uh, to have, that our fans are excited for, uh, that our players are excited to play here. And I can reiterate what Matt and Ryan said. This is a destination that people want to come. I can tell you that from a business standpoint. I can tell you that from a football standpoint. People want to come to Chicago. And you have our word, you have my word, that I'm going to continually represent the McCaskey family, the Hallis family, every single employee here, every player, coach, staff member, every alumni, every fan, every partner and sponsor, everyone around the world who considers themselves uh, affiliated, associated, or respects and loves the Chicago Bears, we're going to continually do it with style, grace, class, and humility. So with that, I'll open it up for yeah, questions. Given, given the competitive impatience you just described, how do you wrap your brain around the changes that were made in the last 48 hours, the changes that weren't made, and, and giving yourself confidence that this is the right path to go down? Yeah, I think the way I wrap my brain around it is that fortunately, uh, I've been here. And you go back to my first job in the NFL. I mean, my first year in the NFL, we were 5-11 and 11 at the St. Louis Rams. Second year, we were 4-12. and 12. And then the third year, we ended up going 16-3 and three and winning the Super Bowl. And I remember many of those days having conversations with John Shaw, our president, Jay Zygmunt, our executive vice president, and Coach Vermeil, uh, is that the questions that I would ask them of making sure the worst thing you can do on an organization that is making progress is to turn around too quickly. And, and, and you have to evaluate honestly. And so I just feel here with the people that we have in this building, the changes that we've started to make today, the people that we will hire, the core group of players that we have, the draft capital that we have, uh, the salary cap situation that we're in, the free agents. I mean, just look what is accomplished. I'm, I, I all firmly believe, go back 12 months ago and look at the progress that we've made. And so once you feel like, yes, you're not where you want to be, we're not where we're going to be, but we're pointed in the right direction, the key is having the right places, I mean, the right people in the right places, doing the right things at the right time for the right reasons. And that's what I'm focused on. So this is reminiscent of the process that we went through in St. Louis. It's reminiscent of the process we went through in Minnesota. You know, 6 and 10, 8 and 8, 10 and 6, 12 and 4. And, 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 and there were many a times that we were in meetings and that we would say, we're not making enough progress too quickly, and we would have to take a step back and say, but are we on the right track? Do we have the right people? Um, and are we focused on the right things? And as I sit here today, unequivocally, I believe that we have the right set of individuals, and my expectations going into this season are extremely high. They're always the same, that we need to win the NFC North. That's where we should be. And, uh, and so we're going to do everything we possibly can to make sure that that's not a word of hope, but it also is reality, and, and, we, and it starts with making sure you have the right culture, but it also starts with making sure you get really good players in here. And I think everyone would attest to the fact that the, the acquisitions that we made last year in the draft and in free agency um, is really positive. And, and I'll tell you this, having rookies play, that's one of the things that impressed me about Matt. Many coaches will not play rookies or they're shy away from it, but having those rookie, rookies play, you saw it toward the end of the year, that is going to play major dividends, not only next year, but also into the future. Evan, when we talked to you on Friday, you said that you were going to, when we were talking about the coaching staff, that you were going to take a big picture, methodical look. Ultimately, how come that came down to not looking outside of the building at any other options? I know Ryan said that there was no call placed to Jim Harbaugh or anyone else. Ultimately, how did you arrive at that decision? I mean, I think the way you arrive at the decision is that you, you start at home first. I mean, one thing about Matt, uh, we know him. We've worked with him. We understand everyone in this 
uh, society, everyone in business, everyone in the NFL, coach, player, we all have blind spots. And there's areas that we can improve. But I have confidence in him. I have confidence in, in, in Ryan and their working relationship. And so what you have to do is to make sure, as I said, can you create an environment? Can we help each other to be able to pull together to create a bond? Uh, because, it, you know, just think about the number of coaches each year that are fired and that are hired, and they all start off, this is the right one. This is going to work. And then two years later, it does it again. And if you look at the organizations in the playoffs right now, look at them right now, it took time to make sure that they really – Build that. Even in down times, they were building because sometime in the teardown is really you're building up. And so I'm focused on making sure. Uh, and it's not that we become where we relax, you know, that, that we're focused on. We want to be diligent. We're type A individuals. We want to win. Um, we're impatiently patient. Uh, but we also understand the importance to build the champion. It does take some time. I'm not saying a, a lot of time, but, but I strongly believe that this third year going into uh, this third year is going to be a critical time for us to take a major jump. Kevin, I, the, Kevin I understand the argument for stability, but next year you're going to have two different <coughs> coordinators. You're going to have a coaching staff where more than half of them are gone from the previous year. Does that still qualify as stability, and, and how so? Yeah, I, I believe so because the, the foundation is is in place. I mean, the year we won the Super Bowl is St. Louis. We had a new offensive uh, coordinator there, and we had co-defensive coordinators. That's the nature of the NFL. But I think and believe that as long as the foundation core elements are in place, then you can have a stable environment that people want to come here and people want to work together. Okay. <coughs> yes. You done? Or I don't want to. Yes. Um, is the property that the Bears own in Arlington Heights still the priority, still the goal for building a new stadium? The priority is to make sure that we build a world-class stadium for our fans. So we still own the property in Arlington Heights. Obviously, we're still in communication uh, with the individuals in Arlington Heights. Uh, we have had meetings uh, with individuals in the city of Chicago. Uh, so we're focused on, again, back to making sure you take the approach of doing the right thing is that we want to make sure that that stadium is a, is a that's a 40 year decision. And we need to make sure that we get uh, that right and that uh, we're very deliberate uh, in our thought process. Yeah, do you have a general timeline on when you think how many years down the road you guys might be able to? Have a new stadium, no matter where it might be. Do you have a goal in mind of when you'd like, what season you'd like that to open? Yeah, I mean, I mean, ideally, you know, just just from the way the market is, you know, the the longer you wait, the more expensive it is uh, building any project. So I'm can can, can uh, make sure I'm focused on not rushing, but making sure that we're deliberate uh, in that stadium process because you know, truly, in that world, time is money. And I've I've said it all along is that the moment that a shovel goes in the ground, I'm confident that we will be able to have a building to play in 36 months after that happens. How, how big of a pivot was that for you? It seemed like when you got here, there was a plot of land where the stadium was going to assume to be built, and then there seemed to have to be a change to the plan. How much of a pivot was that for you once you got here versus what you thought you were walking into? I mean, I, fortunately, most of the issues that I deal with now, I've dealt with before. And anytime you build a stadium project, you have to make sure you explore all of your options. So it wasn't necessarily that big of a pivot. Even before I accepted the job here, I was always looking for what are the, the places that would fit? Uh, what, what, would, what would our, our fans embrace? So it wasn't uh, too much of a pivot. It just made sure we have to keep our options open. Kevin, what, do you, see, Kevin, <laughs> what do you see as your involvement in the football operations? <clears throat> decisions that have to be made this offseason, some pretty big ones. Where do you fit in with that? I think one of the things that, that is special about this group is uh, this is not an ego-driven group. This is a group that makes sure that we're focused on getting to what is right. And so it's been uh, an enjoyment uh, to work with Ryan, uh, to work with Matt, to work with George, everyone else uh, in the football operations department. I'm here, you know, as a resource, and I just want us to win. And my theory that every day from a football operations standpoint that I walk in this building, is there anything or anyone or any situation that I face in my career in the National Football League or even at the Big Ten that could help us win. And I think when people come to the table uh, with that mindset, uh, it works. We don't agree on everything. And so, uh, but, but that's the good thing about it. We have a very healthy, respectful, you know, relationship. So my focus uh, on is that, is there anything uh, that I can do to help this organization uh, win, whether it's one football game, whether it's to get contact to hire uh, a coach that will help us move it along. And so I just look as, as, as a resource here uh, to be able to help us win. How are you at evaluating quarterbacks? <laughs>
Maybe yep. my next lifetime. <laughs> what intrigues you about the South Lock? Uh, intrigues me about the, I mean, it's not necessarily the South Lock. What intrigues me uh, about downtown is I, I strongly believe Chicago is the finest city in all of the world. I mean, very rarely you do you get an opportunity to have such a beautiful downtown with a vibrant business community, with an absolutely beautiful lake and the energy that, that goes along. And so I, I always focus on, you know, what's a way that we could, you know, bring together the beauty of the lake, the beauty of downtown, the business community, all the art exhibits uh, to bring that together for an environment. Because it's always about the fans. How, how can we create an environment that they really enjoy? And not only on our game days, but also from art, from food, um, um, just from music. And, uh, I, I, you know, I live downtown. I love the city. And I just think we're, we're blessed to be able to live in a city like Chicago. And so it has many pluses. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm just a big proponent of the Chicagoland area. I'm a big proponent of Arlington Heights, but there's something that's really special about uh, downtown Chicago. Does the city have minuses in order there? You know, I don't, I, I'm one of those folks, I try to stay away from the minuses or the negatives. I just look at, because I, I believe that, you know, we're blessed here in Chicago. A lot of uh, places that you live, you don't have options that we could be talking about Arlington Heights or sh Chicago. And so we're, we're fortunate. We have, we have very good choices here. Uh, but, but again, I think, and, and sometime, I think when you recognize, when you travel away from Chicago, you can take a step back and realize that we are fortunate to have Chicago that is such a special place. And so I want to make sure that wherever we build our stadium, that we do it in a manner that pulls our fans uh, together, that we can create experiences that they'll remember for multiple generations. Can you build the same expansive project downtown that you propose to do in Arlington Heights? Um, I, I would say, I mean, quite naturally, anytime you have 326 acres, you know, you can do more. Right. But, but, but it's amazing. You know, these are the things that uh, I'm constantly thinking about every day. I think about our football team, the ways we can get better. I think about what we can do from an employee standpoint here. Uh, I think about the stadium and development. And so you look at U.S. Bank Stadium, that's not a real big footprint, but you've been able to create, um, you know, that environment. And so, yes, there are things that an environment downtown that you can create that you don't have in the suburbs or things in the suburbs that you can create that you don't have downtown. And, uh, and I'm, so I'm one of those individuals that not only I look at life as the glass is half full, I look at the glass is full and it's pouring over and there's so many things that we could do together. So absolutely, we could build something that uh, would be magnificent downtown. When it, comes to, when it comes to the offensive coordinator opening and the staff, to be able to have as wide of a pool as you want, those there are probably people who are going to want assurances that they won't just be here for one year if things don't go according to plan next year and that the current staff is gone. Are contract extensions, is that being talked about right now? Uh, we haven't. I mean, as of right now, we're, what, three days removed from the uh, season. Uh, I haven't had any discussions uh, with ownership or anyone about that. But, again, I can just attest to uh, what's happened with a number of calls and, and outreach that I've had to me, the people that I know in the league. Uh, people are excited about the Chicago Bears. You know, they love the talent that we have. Uh, they love the draft capital that we have. I mean, that we have uh, to be able to use. They love our salary cap situation. They appreciate the stability of the ownership of over 100 years. And, um, and so the perception uh, of, of what people think about the Chicago Bears, this is a very, very unique opportunity. Even the stadium development project plays into that. So I don't think we'll have a problem at all getting uh, world-class candidates, not only from an offensive coordinator and quarterback coach standpoint and the defensive coordinator standpoint, this is a job that people are excited about uh, to come here, and we have a lot of talent. And, and the, it, it's, it's always exciting to join an organization when you're on the upswing to be able to help take it to the top. Can you, you tell me what set. all your talks are with District 15, 211, and 214 at this point? Well, we've stayed in communication. Um, um, I know there's been some outreach. That, uh, that, that we need to follow up on to make sure we continue that dialogue. And again, this is just a long process. So I expect sometime uh, here in the near, near future that uh, our attorneys and their attorneys will continue to, to have dialogue. Um, and so we've had a very respectful relationship with the districts. Has that been a roadblock that you didn't foresee? I, no, I mean, I try to foresee uh, pretty much everything. That's just the, the nature of it. I mean, that's why we're here. If everything was easy and if everything was in place, um, I said it even, you know, yesterday, if, if, uh, 
if everything was in place here, we wouldn't be here. And so I understand that. Again, I don't look at it as a roadblock. I look at it as an opportunity for us to build relationships, to do something um, special together. And, uh, and I really enjoy the challenge of, of, of working through ideas to be able to come up with creative solutions that people can buy into and recognize that it's a win-win-win for everyone involved. And what are the most immediate steps you need to take or what clarity do you need before you're ready to go in one direction or another with that stadium project? I mean, I, you know, the, um, I, I think the, the next steps is just to make sure uh, that it, it's, it's a bunch of next steps. I mean, you really need to make sure that we settle on a location. Uh, you need to make sure from a financial you know, standpoint that it not only makes sense, I'm, I'm neurotic about making sure things make financial sense. And, uh, and because it's important to make sure, you know, th this is a large amount of money. And uh, so you can't enter in these decisions uh, haphazardly and uh, kind of decide as you go. And so I think the key of it is, is just making sure we're very de deliberate. And uh, so there's a, there's a bunch of different steps uh, as far as location. We know with Arlington Heights, getting the tax situation scored away, seeing what happens. I mean, there's, you know, you have a election year this year. There, it, it's always moving parts. That's what makes the ribbon cutting so exciting and special. That's what makes uh, the playing in the stadium uh, so special. Uh, because, you, you know, if, you, if you're blessed to build and be associated with one stadium in your career, and now to be able to, to do this again, um, I, I take this very seriously. And I just want to make sure that the legacy that we create for our Chicago Bears fans, that is something that they truly are excited about. Uh, that, that, that when we're able to, to open the, the doors of our new stadium. Do you guys have the property tax thing figured out in Arlington Heights? Is that pretty much the one thing that's keeping you from just saying, hey, Arlington Park is well, That's one of the elements, but there's so many factors that we have to deal with. Kevin, Kevin, there's been a lot of talk about the uh, dysfunction and the adversity that Matt was able to steer the team through this season. As president, how did you digest the adversity that was going on in your building, and why do you why are you confident that, that, that those are missteps that will be learned from? Yeah, I mean, you know, you can approach life as, you know, this is a problem, or I look at it as an opportunity. And I watch everything. I mean, I had one-on-one -on -one meetings with over 211 of our employees. And um, I, 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 you know, from practice to walkthroughs to games, um, this is my life. And, and so, you know, you can fill it in an environment that, that uh, is this environment cohesive? Are people together? Are they focused on the right things for the right reasons at the right time? And you just feel that it is. And, and again, I mean, you think about it, he's, he's, he's been here for 24 months. I mean, it's difficult. Uh, um, this job is difficult enough. And, but, but if studying businesses, studying professional sports teams, studying especially even NFL teams, it just seems like that third year is a, is a, is a critical year to have its things to start meld. Um, and especially, I commend, I wasn't here uh, then, but I commend Ryan and Matt and, and, and Matt Feinstein and other people uh, here to be able to clean up the salary cap situation. So to have a clean salary cap and to not be uh, heavy uh, burden with, with dead money and to, you know, make trades for I me. Mean, you think about two veterans. When in one year have you seen a team get someone of the caliber of the player of DJ Moore and Montez Sweat? Think about the last time. You might get one. But to get two of them and on both sides of the ball, that's very unique. And then to have the first and the ninth pick and other draft choices, to have our rookies play, to go into the offseason, not with surgeries. I mean, those are all the things that give you momentum. It doesn't guarantee success, but it puts us in the right position that if we stay together, that we keep challenging each other, that we remain impatient, that we remain focused, that we keep our egos out of the door, and that we keep in mind that every time we walk in and out of the, the, this building, that we look at George Hallis and the way he built the National Football League and this, and this team, it's really important. So I'm extremely confident and maybe so confident is because I've lived this before. And so maybe if this was my first time, uh, it may be different, but I lived this before. And I understand how it galvanizes an organization, a football team, a city, a fan base, when you're able to go through very difficult times and be deliberate, be fair, make good decisions, always be forward thinking, have innovation, and, uh, and bring in the right people who can help you be a champion, not only in the community, on the field, uh, but also in this business. And to, to, that, to that end, when, when Alan Williams resigned, 
the, the response from the organization was very strange relative to departures. I mean, not even if we wish him well or we hope he gets the help he needs. It was very cold. And frankly, it was not a good look for the organization. I'm curious what you th how you felt that whole situation was managed yep. uh, by the Bears. And I'll put my lawyer hat on now for a minute. You know, sometimes when things happen, out of respect for an individual, you have to make sure that um, less is more. And, and, and I can say that, um, is that it was very important during that period to be respectful of Allen and his family. We do wish him well. And uh, he's a good man, we, do, we, we wish him well, but we just needed to make sure that, uh, that we handle that in a manner that not only was respectful, but that also, you know, we followed uh, legal, you know, issues and, 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 and a course of action. So I feel very comfortable of how we handle that. Those things are, there's no uh, playbook that you go in the office and say, turn the tab 10 and on page 225 and go to that. I mean, th those things are very complex. So you do the best you can. There's some things we learn. Uh, from it, but I do feel, and I think if you talk to Alan, he will tell you that we handled that situation the best that we could with style, grace, and class. You lost two coaches. I mean, you lost another coach this year as well. Yes. It was determined for HR. What, how do you feel about, you know, the work you guys have done to kind of look at these coaches to vet them, and how will things change when you're doing these hirings this offseason? Yeah, we can we can always get better, and again, I look at it as, as just like in a football game. You know, sometimes you, um, things happen, and you say, that, okay, next time we run that play, we need to make sure, uh, you know, this needs to ha happen. And that's no different in business. And one thing about it, you know, we're not a manufacturing company, is that we deal with people. And, and, and people are beautiful, they're enjoyable, they're wonderful, but it does create complex situations. And so because of that, we're constantly always creating an environment of saying, what can we do better? I mean, fortunately, uh, the leadership here, you know, we're we're serious note takers. We, we evaluate, you know, what we can do better. I mean, you heard Ryan talk about as, as he goes back and looks what we can do better. And when you get a group of people like that to say uh, that we don't know everything, uh, but, but the, I think the thing that I've enjoyed the most about working with George and Pat and Brian and James and Michelle, the McCaskies family that work here, is that they always start is the question is, what is the right thing to do? And so long as we start with that, um, you know, things worked out. So I'm feel, I feel very comfortable that areas, do we have areas to improve in our organization? Absolutely. Are we focused on those? Absolutely. And I feel great after nine months kind of where we are, uh, primarily because we're focused on even getting better on and off the field. Ryan mentioned those three high-profile losses that obviously left him disappointed yes. with the leads that got away. You couple those with the two bookend losses to the rival on Green Bay. How did you scrutinize those losses from your seat as an overseer of the football side? I mean, maybe this is just me. I don't like losing. So, I mean, I don't, I don't separate them with high-profile losses. At the end of the day, this is not gymnastics, and they don't do a 9.8, and you, you get credit. Either you win or you lose or you tie. And so all of the losses, even some of the losses, I don't look at it and say, well, that was a good loss because we got blown out. Uh, I look at it as that we lost the game, and what can we do uh, to be better? So they all bother me. Um, you know, every game that we play, because the good thing about it in the National Football League, you know, the goal is to, to seek to win every single game. And the thing that impressed me, and I even go back when I was even interviewing for the job here. I came to the Philadelphia game last year as a fan, bought tickets online, parked in the parking lot with my daughter and friends, went and sat in the stands, you know, ate a hot dog, had a beer. Um, and the thing that impressed me, even that game, it was a very cold day, is that this football team played hard. And that's one of the things that I, I learned along my journey in the NFL uh, is, that, is that you can look at the desire of the players. Our locker room is really special. We have not only talented players, but they work hard, they play hard. And, uh, and I think when you, you, you see them come back this offseason, I think you're going to see a really focused group who's uh, focused on being a champion. Your, your seat, aside from the cultural things that have been talked about, the locker room unity, the vibe in, in the room, what do you think was accomplished within this last season? I think the thing was accomplished is, is that we, we went through and had to deal with multiple crisis situations because that's going to happen, you know. And, and so I think you, you really um, um, can evaluate really the fortitude uh, the type of person that you have based upon how they handle a crisis. That was my devotional reading today, which is somewhat apropos, is it's easy. I mean, when people are running around and practice and, 
and the music is playing, and and uh, uh, it's it's fun. But then when the tackling starts, or in business, when a player gets injured, or coaches leave, or you know things happen, that's when you really see the true character of people, and that's one of the things that I I feel strongly about the group that we have here. They 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 have strong character. It's not perfect. But they have strong character. But I always would prefer to face a crisis on the front end in a relationship, in a building process, because then you can understand, you know, what you have. And, and you know, you, you talk to a doctor. You can understand the type of doctor you have by going to the emergency room and uh, where the surgery is not planned ahead and they can look, you know, look at the chart. And so I, I always, whether it was at the Rams, we had crisis. I mean, we won nine games in our first two years, and and they were ready to fire Coach Vermeil. They were ready to fire all of us, and uh, and then looks what happens. And I still even think today the Ram team today has been able to build off of uh, some of that strength that we built there. Same thing in Minnesota. We had we had crisis situation. Any business, any family, you're going to face a crisis. But the key of it is how do you handle it, and uh, can you pull together? Because either crisis will either pull you together, or pull you apart. And I can say what we went through this year, it actually pulled us together. So I'm looking forward uh, to, to this upcoming season. Yeah. Just Kevin, with, with Ryan Poles, uh, what has convinced you over your year working with him that he's your guy and that he, he's the person you want to partner with going forward, even though you didn't choose him originally? You know, um, and, I've, and I've thought about this. You know, one of my early clients when I was a sports agent was Will Shields. And, you know, Will was from Lawton, Oklahoma, and he went to Nebraska and drafted in the third round of the Chiefs. And... Uh, started every game. Danny Villa got hurt the first game. Will came in, started the remainder of his career, went into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And the reason why I say that, there's something special about offensive linemen. And Ryan is the same way. They're, they're, they're smart. Uh, they have a fire that burns within them. They're tough. Um, and that's what Ryan is. I mean, I, I'm incredibly impressed uh, of how diligent and thoughtful he is. And so I think you have a really good combination in someone – uh, like me, uh, who's been able to kind of walk over the mountain and come back and to be able to share with him uh, things that, that, that he will see and to really to be as a partner. And so I just like his attention to detail. He is absolutely brilliant. He's a hard worker. Uh, he loves his family. He wants to win. He loves the Bears. Um, and he wants to do it all and not get any credit. And so when you get people like that in the business, that's, what, that's why Ian Cunningham is interviewing today because he's hired people like that and so I just feel um and he's and he's been around it he went through it in Kansas City and it, it wasn't all smooth there and and the one good thing about it when you've been around success or you've been around successful players you understand how they practice how they play how they run their life and it makes it easier to know what we need to do here to make sure that we uh replicate uh, replicate that they haven't a lot already purchased put you at a deficit in terms of leverage and negotiations with Arlington Heights, and have you been able to gain some of that leverage back through your due diligence and exploring other site options? I, th I think honesty, I think credibility, um, and I, I always approach every meeting, every negotiation as a fact that we sit at a round table. You know, so many people go to a negotiation look like, well, who's the winner and the loser? There are times, and the way I approach it, that everyone wins. So I don't think you know, we were, you know, were behind uh, at a deficit is because I look at it as that what's the right thing to do. And I actually spend more time learning about that person on the other side of the table as far as what's most important to them. Because if I can make sure that I solve for their issues, then my issues are going to be easy. And I want us to walk away. I want them to walk back to whoever they report to and say, we made progress. I don't want to walk back and say, Boy, that Kevin Warren, he, you know, he took my shoes and my coat and, and my wallet and everything. Because when you do that, you get a chance to do that one time. And I think one of the reasons why uh, I've been blessed to work on a lot of different deals is I walk away uh, from it to say, what can we do to create a win-win-win? Because you know what? When you're dealing with good people and you're doing things for the right reason, there's enough out there for everyone. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, to be able to work on it and, and uh, on this stadium. And like I said, I count it all joy and, and truly a gift from God to be able to do it. Kevin, you Storm. talked about the, uh, the importance of continuity. What were your thoughts watching the Packers game this past on week 18 and knowing how important that rivalry is, how close you guys to making that critical third year league that you talked about? 
I mean, you know, anytime I, you know, I actually, because I, I always look for what is the positivity. And I actually thought if that would be my preferred team to end the regular season with. And it was interesting that, you know, the tab that they put on your briefcase when you go in from a security standpoint, I didn't cut it off until yesterday. And uh, for that reason, because I wanted to look at it for a couple of days and and try to still get the dirt and gravel out of my mouth to say, you know, that wasn't a good taste. And 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 I even I even said it on the elevator to a group of people. I said, you know, the, the plan is, is that we're not going to have this feeling, you know, anymore. And so I, I think it's good because playing the Packers is such a great rivalry. It's great for the National Football League. And so I thought it was, uh, in, in an odd way, I thought it was a good way to start 2024 as a reminder to show us of what we need uh, to do, uh, to do better, and to come together and to continually get better with our coaches, to get better uh, with our players. And, uh, and our fans are there. I look at our fans every day that they are ready and they're just waving to us to say, come on, we're here. We're, we're, we're ready for you. And so I think about all of our partners and our fans and, and, and I'm looking forward to the day of doing all that we possibly can uh, to make sure, because we have an opportunity here with the Chicago Bears that is unlike any other team in the National Football League. This is a very, very special franchise. So I'm, I'm excited about the challenge, and I'm excited about 2024, and I'm excited about seeing all this come, uh, come together.